welcome to the 34th annual Veterinary Carol Service. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you all here tonight. Um, the choir and the trad band are fierce excited. A lot of work has gone into this night and just want to welcome everybody's friends and families who've travelled. It's great to see um, so many faces. Uh, I hope you all donate generously to the Irish Guide Dogs. They're a fantastic cause and I'll speak a little bit about that later. But um, just to kick things off, we have Professor Michael Doherty from our facts department. Um, who's a, a real character in the veterinary faculty here and he's going to say a few words and then our choir will get going so you're all very welcome here tonight. You're all very welcome. I guess current check Glinder Creator was like a special the two of her Listen, Eagle Warshaw a sale in the College of Threadlick. It's a real pleasure to, to kick things off in this really important night in the, the life of the veterinary night. And uh, I, I'll be very brief, but I just was thinking about my own memories in, in practice in Donegal at Christmas time. And, and um, it was interesting, it was always a quiet time. Um, there was a lot of there was a serenity, but, and there was excitement with it as well. And visits to farms were less frequent, and, there, and you would often leave the farms with the back of the car full of the best holly. The farmer had, sp or you had spotted on the way down, and he said, I need some of that holly, great berries in that holly. And you'd get the holly in the back of the car. And uh, this kind of thing really made it wonderful. And then occasionally a farmer would reach into the, the hay or the straw and pull out a little bottle um, <laughs> with uh, what was known locally as any shown. Um, because that's where all the best potching is made, you know that? <laughs> and, um, but it was for animal treatment only. And, 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 um, and there, were, there, there are lovely uh, little stories of, of children's folklore, folklore around Christmas, one of which has to do with the cows. Jesus was born at midnight on Christmas Eve, and in memory of that, on each anniversary, the gift of speech was given to cows. Before going to bed, we always gave them an armful of hay, and we wondered if it was really true that they could converse, and if so, what they might talk about. I, I also have memories of the tradition of lighting the candle in the window on Christmas Eve, which we still see in Dublin, um, uh, even today, but also particularly in rural Ireland. And the, the idea here was to, to welcome Mary, Mary and Joseph into the house, uh, as the great poet Martin O'Giron put it, be cunyla gala, and nach punyo glasta, is chinyo wona, er halach einta. So, this welcome, a welcome of one family to another, that's the welcome that the, the family that is the vet school want to send out tonight. Gurumayagov.
the start, I'm sure everybody will agree. Um, coming up next, we have an address from our Dean, Grace McCahey. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Liz, and congratulations um, to the choir and to the instrumentalists and musicians tonight for um, what already has proven to be another wonderful uh, annual Christmas veterinary carol concert here. It's truly a great pleasure and an honour for me to welcome you all here this evening for the 34th annual UCD Veterinary Christmas Carol Concert. In our vet school here in UCD, we've had an eventful year. We had Temple Granville, Grandin and the Bionic Vet come to speak, among many others. Uh, Vivian Duggan became president of Veterinary Ireland. And Owen got his European diploma. Congratulations, Owen. <laughs> Junior Vets was a big hit on RTE with Martin, Fiona, Roisin and Claudia. And I see Martin at least here tonight. Martin, I don't know if you've got your, your autograph signing hand ready. <laughs> Holly the Pug got lungworm. That's angiostrongolosis if you're an encourager. And she got better. The UCD team won the Animal Welfare Judging Competition in Guelph University just recently, just last week. The carol service, I'm reliably told, got a plug on Phantom FM this morning. <laughs> and we got our very own bespoke School of Veterinary Medicine Christmas tree ornaments, courtesy of the Intrepid White Coat Committee. New students and staff joined us, <clears throat> and some left us, mostly to go on to the next phase of their lives and careers. But of course, we were all as a community very touched by the tragic loss during the summer of our student Aeneas. I'm very pleased to say that a posthumous degree in veterinary medicine will be awarded to Aeneas next Monday at the conferring ceremony. And we hope that this will be of some comfort to his family as they remember his many talents and achievements. Events like that over the summer certainly bring home to all of us that however successful, talented, and lucky others may appear to us, we should all consider the possibility that behind the cheerful exterior lies a problem waiting to be shared, a worry to be divulged, or an uncertainty to be understood. So let's try and remember, not only in the Christmas season, but throughout the entire year, that we should be generous with those random acts of kindness, Make a joke, smile, invite the outsider in. And remember, the other guy doesn't have it all sorted. He's just bumbling along, just like you. So to just change topics slightly, on occasions such as this, social occasions, I always feel, and I'm sure that you'll agree, that a little parasitology is a useful addition <laughs> to the celebration. And we know we have the 12 days of Christmas, so I thought it might be appropriate to do just a very short and succinct presentation on the 12 parasites of Christmas. <laughs> so I don't know if you'd be able to see them, and I don't know whether you guys... <laughs> but this is the first parasite of Christmas. This guy is called Hyaloma dromedariae, and it's a parasite of the camel. And of course, this parasite caused a lot of trouble to the camels carrying the three wise men to Bethlehem, just after the birth of Jesus. So that's certainly one to, to remember. The next one then is, is one uh, really from the same region of the world, and this one is called Plasmodium vivax, which of course you all know is the mosquito vector of malaria. And malaria, <clears throat> in the time uh, of uh, that Jesus was born, was reliably thought to be kept at bay, at least the vector was thought to be kept at bay by a liberal, liberal sprinkling of frankincense. So hence the frankincense and the gold frankincense and myrrh. This is another nice one here. This one is a, a very small parasite, a blood parasite. And we know turtle doves are associated with Christmas and peace. Um, but a turtle dove infected with this parasite called Hemoproteus tertu wouldn't feel very peaceful. <laughs> and would promptly fall down from her perch. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, this is an easy one. Um, everybody, of course, will recognize these parasites. If not, come and speak to me afterwards. <laughs> this one is Trypanosoma lewisii. And Trypanosoma lewisii is actually a parasite of the rat. And when Christmas Island was discovered uh, by uh, the Queen Mary ship arriving in 16 something or other, um, the rats on the ship brought this parasite, uh, which unfortunately wiped out the two native species of rats on Christmas Island. So another sad parasitological tale. <laughs> but it gets a bit better. This is a cheerful one. This one is called Kefanomia trompe. And its uh, real name is the reindeer nose botfly. <laughs> so Rudolph and its red nose. Why do you think Rudolph always has a red nose? It's because. <laughs> so this parasite, at least, I think, is certainly contributing to the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Rudolph and his friends Donner and Blitzen, however are also quite likely to be infected with this parasite here. This one is called Alophostrongolus rangiferi. Um, you can tell it's a lungworm from the starchy granules in the larvae. <laughs> okay. And this one, unfortunately, gets into the nervous system, the central nervous system of reindeers, and it can cause Rudolph and Santa's sleigh, therefore, to get lost and to lose direction on Christmas Day because it in interferes with the sense of direction in the reindeer. And still on the reindeer theme, this is the last reindeer one. Um, this guy here is called Hypoderma tarandi. And unfortunately, again, it can cause Rudolph, Donner, Blitzen and their friends to be very scratchy and itchy and to be distracted from their duties on Christmas Day. So not so good. Okay, I think we're on number six or seven now, so not too long more to go. Um, <coughs> Many of us will be having turkey for our Christmas dinner. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the turkeys will not be infected with this parasite, which is called Imeria adenoides. And turkeys infected with this parasite, this protozoan, will not be plump and fat and will have not gained the requisite amount of weight to make a good, satisfying Christmas dinner. So hopefully no Imeria in your turkey. <laughs> okay, one more turkey one. If your turkey arrives and you happen uh, to be butchering your own turkey or you see it, your turkey before it arrives in the supermarket and it looks slightly black, blue, cyanosed around the head and waffle, waffles, you can probably have a good bet that it's infected with Histomonas meliagridis, another nasty protozoan parasite. And again, you might want to avoid that particular turkey. Really with the turkey goes the ham. <laughs> So pig parasites are dead easy, all right? I'm not going to spend long on these. Aspirus suum, right, present in the intestine of your pig before he becomes your Christmas ham. And equally, instead of pork scratchings, if your pork is scratchy, <laughs> likely because of Sarcoptes scabii that's hanging around in the, pork, in the pig pen. Finally, the very last Christmas parasite. Um, it's become quite fashionable. Um, in Dublin 4, at least it was before the recession hit, um, to substitute the Christmas turkey with the Christmas goose, which is very expensive. But if the goose is infected with this parasite here, which you will all recognize as Giardia, I'm afraid this goose is completely cooked. This goose is cooked. <laughs> Parasites of Christmas, I'll show you, sure you all be glad to hear. Um, in conclusion, I would just say again, congratulations to Vetsock and all of the participants and organisers for a wonderful evening, a wonderful celebration, and please be generous to our charity, the Guide Dogs for the Blind as well. Thank you all very much.
Okay, sorry, I forgot to properly introduce our choir conductor at the start of the night. It's me, Gard. Sorry about that. <laughs> she told me that I can't call her uh, the, the choir master anymore. I think I just made that phrase up myself, but uh, it's conductor. <laughs> um, our soloist there is Sean Elias and Rosemary Burke. Um, they were brilliant, well done, girls. Next, we have a poem um, from Tori Sweeney, who's a member of our teaching faculty. Um, I'm delighted she's here tonight. It's great to be able to get both staff from the hospital and from our teaching staff. I think it's good to, to bridge the two together. Um, and then we'll have a lovely solo ballet performance from Laura Jenkins. to the staff, she steals our notes as well. <laughs> the poem is entitled Stars by Sarah Teasdale. Alone in the night on a dark hill with pine trees around me, spicy and still, and a heaven full of stars over my head, white and topaz and misty red, myriads with beating hearts of fire that eons cannot vex or tire. Up the dome of heaven like a great hill, I watch them marching stately and still, and I know that I am honored to be witness of such majesty.
both Laura and Torres were uh, very professional there dealing with our mess ups. I'm sorry about that. Um, next, we have uh, Leon Gillon, our chaplain here in UCD, to say a few words. Um, and our soloists for the upcoming pieces are Lorna McSherry, and she's accompanied by Jennifer McGinnity. Thank you very much, Liz, for your invitation and to all the vet school for inviting me to this great event. There's no doubt about it. It's the best entertainment on campus um, all year round, I would say. I love coming to this. And I mean that for its professionalism, for its variety, for its good humour, for everything. It's just wonderful. So it's great to be here. Our thoughts turn, as they have this evening, to Aeneas, who died so tragically this summer. How we wish he were here tonight to enjoy the joie de vivre that's so palpable um, among us. But we do remember that tragedy and even death is never the last word. The babe of Bethlehem, we were remembering in our beautiful carols tonight, and which elicited such profound joy in the local shepherds, is the same Christ who penetrated the darkest of darknesses only to rise again and instill in generation after generation, including ourselves now, his deep divine reassurance that nothing, nothing can quash or quench. I'm reminded of um, an incident with a student here a number of years ago, a phone call, a Chinese lad who um, had just begun to recover from a very serious accident. Um, he uh, fell off his bike, well, he's knocked off his bike, and there was serious brain damage. But he was brought into an induced coma, and he actually recovered completely from his injuries. And he was told by the doctors that 99% of people with his injuries die. And he, he told me that before he came to Ireland, he was a non-believer. He believed in nothing. He was from an atheistic country, and he himself had no idea about God or anything like that. But he had profound mystical experiences when he was in, this, in his coma, which he told me all about. And he described this most beautiful place that he found himself in. And he described the gold colors and the, the sense of serenity and joy and peace. And he said he was utterly convinced when he was out of his coma that God was real. And now he was a believer. And he said his life was full of gratitude and he was, his, his whole attitude and outlook on life had completely changed. He was now a believer. He had moved into a state of belief. He also spoke about a memory of two people who came to entertain him like you're entertaining us tonight with music around Christmas time. And he was in the bed, he said, and he just the tears flowed and flowed and flowed. And he couldn't get them out of his mind for months and months afterwards. And he said to me, I want to connect with their spirit. What was that spirit? Certainly the spirit of human kindness, the spirit of love, the spirit of generosity, the spirit of God, maybe. Our hope, really, tonight, and our belief, is that Aeneas has entered that realm of light and beauty. And we're remembering him tonight because we know that he is still there in another way. And we remember too to pray for ourselves that the story of Christmas will once again enter our souls, resonate deeply within us and calm us with its reassurance that in the end all will be well. So at Christmas time we pray that God will bless us all with his abundant gifts. Amen.
Sinead Band are coming up now. <laughs> um, they're led this year by Sinead O'Leary. Um, so they're, they're brilliant. Uh, the last few weeks in the library, you can always hear them practicing away, and it's always a bit of crack out in the canteen listening to them. Um, our soloist for the upcoming pieces is Sean O'Brien, and she's again accompanied by Jennifer McGinnity.
Next is um, the fun to the night. Uh, tradition here to have a skit song in fourth year and fifth year. So the fourth years are going to perform their skit song. I heard there's some some Betsock references in there that I'm not too pleased about, James Barrett, but we won't go there. <laughs> and then the final years have their song, um, so I hope you enjoy. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, Rory Brando put me with us tonight, um, but I'm, I'm not going to try and uh, do my best, Rory, here. Uh, I'll just introduce the final two songs from the choir. Um, last two songs, even now, you can play a blinder. Give it up for the choir. <laughs> tonight was absolutely fantastic um, nothing like the carol service night to make me feel like such a useless uh, individual I have no talent at all um, they're just incredible like the trad band and the girls in the choir the lads in the choir <laughs> um, but it's definitely like the carol service that when I was in first year made me realise that there's something really special about this faculty here um, I remember in September my fifth year coming up to me and saying you have to come join the choir I was like god these are a bunch of freaks they want me to sing carol service in September what is that about <laughs> But uh, I did the exact same to my first year, he's in the choir now, so I don't know whether he'll blame me for that or what. Um, there's a lot of thanks to be said tonight, um, especially to the staff members who came and spoke, uh, Torres, um, Michael and Grace, we really appreciate it. And it's always like the staff involvement that make these nights really special and they bring the whole school together. Um, there's three individuals who I really have to thank for uh, organising the choir and the trad band, and that's our fantastic conductor, Maeve Gard.
huge thank you has to go out to everybody in the choir and the trial group in general because you know college is tough and like we've a lot going on ourselves and they gave up so much time the past few weeks for rehearsals and it's an awful lot to expect from people coming up to exams and so just thank you so much to everybody who's involved in tonight for going to the rehearsals and putting on such a great show tonight. Lastly, I just want to remind everybody that as much crack as tonight is, we always try and raise a bit for the Irish Guide Dogs. They're such a fantastic charity in Ireland and we've been affiliated with them for years and years at Betsock. Um, so we were talking in the canteen the other day and somebody told me it cost €38,000 to breed, train and support a single guide dog. Uh, that's massive money and I, I double check the figures so it wasn't me exaggerating. <laughs> um, so just remember tonight to please uh, just give generously to this charity. Like I really, I really want to like help them out tonight. So please donate. And thank you so much for coming. And thanks for tuning in if you're tuning into the live stream. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's mulled wine and mince pies served outside at the moment. And then I do believe there'll be a celebratory baby over in the student bar. So please join us and thank you very much.